Hi everyone, now I will talk about <clears throat> some of the subjects that I will cover. Um, I wrote a lot of, I, a lot of my, my past is coming back to me and I'm jotting it down as it comes back to me. I want to do one episode about how we must believe in God's will above all things, including disappointments, adversities, and sickness. Sickness and suffering both cleanse the soul, and of course, adversities um, teach us. They are great, great teachers, and adversities also, many times, stumbling blocks, we must climb over stumbling blocks to get to the stepping stones. That's like a classical point of view. Stumbling blocks, something evil, something bad. Not not to sin. I'm not saying we need to sin. I'm not saying that. But I mean, sometimes you have to be with evil people to meet a person they know who is of God or someone important in your life that you need to meet. So sometimes if you didn't meet that evil person and relate to them, you wouldn't meet that person on the other place who is very, very good. Um, oh, yes, I want to talk about this. Yes, 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 yes. They labeled me members of my family. It was one person in particular, which I'm, um, um, but they all took part in that. You know, they labeled me weird. <laughs> Today, weird is not a terrible indictment of anyone. The word has lost some of its punch. It's like back in the day when I was a child, if you label someone a homosexual, it was really evil to their reputation. People would say terrible things if someone was a homeless. They didn't say gay in those days. They would say horrible things. And today, people are coming out in the open about being gay or bi. There is no more terrible stigma, stigma like it used to be. And it's people are accepting the fact that some people are gay, they're born gay, and like Jesus said, some of them are made that way, and they're made that way usually by molestation, so they could be made gay or bisexual, and many people are bisexual, or maybe a lot of people are bisexual to some degree, maybe, so it's not a stigma anymore, but the word weird, when I was a kid, that was a very evil thing, to be weird had a sting to it. It's like maybe you were mental, you know. So my mother, my brother was in the eighth grade. I was in the fifth grade. And that was a very important traumatic year for me because that's when I found out dad would never live with us again. And I was absolutely devastated and crushed because I adored him. And um, so my mother comes to the school. I thought that she would, you know, care about me and talk to my teacher. I don't even think she talked to my teacher. She only talked to my brother, Jimmy, his teacher. So I said, well, I was so eager to know what the teacher thought about me. So I said, what did the teacher say about us? So. They said, my mother and them, that Jimmy was great. What did he say about me? She, I mean, it was a lady, fifth grade. What did she say about me? She said you were weird. That's a lie. No teacher would ever say to the parent, your child is weird. But I was crushed and devastated. I was very hurt, very hurt. All right, now other things I will want to talk about are, um, I want to talk about demoralization and internalization, how they destroy you from within. How people, they want you to hate yourself. You see, 
they can't, unless they take a weapon or whatever weapon that is, even including their hands, or a weapon and murder you, they can't destroy you by words unless there is some type of internalization. Words and actions, cruel words, evil words, mean words, anything that disempowers you, anything that puts you down. And, and I'm not talking about correction. We all need correction. You know, in the Bible it says, spare the rod and spoil the child. And that doesn't mean to abuse them and beat them up for nothing. It means if they're going to run into the street and not look and, in, and possibly get killed and do it again and again and again, you're going to have to spank that child. You're going to have to some way make an impression on that child. So I am not talking on proper discipline or proper correction. Spare the rod and spoil the child means if you don't correct them, they will grow crooked. It's like a tree, whatever way it's bent, it will grow that way. So if a child needs to be corrected, but they need to be loved, but correction is part of love, and God corrects us. God chastises, chastises those whom she loves. Chastises those whom she loves. If God, we learn by correction. Abuse is something else. People who are growing spiritually must be corrected down to the tiniest fault. All the saints were sticklers about correction. Penance. They, they did voluntary penance in, back in the day. Today, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen said it well. He said, we don't need hair shirts anymore. Hair shirts were these horrible, uncomfortable uh, cloths that they would put on that had horse hair on them. And they were so uncomfortable that people in convents and, and, and monasteries would wear them for penance. So Bishop, in the old days, back in the day, way in the old days, and Bishop Fulton J. Sheen said, today we don't need hair shirts. Our neighbors are our hair shirts. And boy, he said it right. People, other people will punish us. <laughs> Wherever there are people, we will be... I don't guarantee you will be loved by them, but I can almost guarantee you'll be punished by them <laughs> in some way, in a hundred different ways. Whoever they are, at school, at work, when you go out to have a good time, you will get punished <laughs> by people, our neighbors, are our hair shirts, Bishop Sheen said. So uh, I want to talk at length and in detail. I've, th some of these things are so important. It was, um, I want to talk about, in detail, about abuse because I am, my private and personal life is filled with abuse, filled with abuse. And I want to talk about what do abusers get out of abusing others? They must get something out of it. I want to get into that deeply. Abusers, those who put you down needlessly, those who make you feel small for no reason, those who hurt you again and again and again, belittle you, those who just emotionally hurt you, mentally hurt you, and physically hurt you. They deny you. They reject you. There are, then of course, there are people who physically knife other people, beat them up, strangle them, murder them, shoot them, kill them. What do they get out of it? Why do they do it? Why doesn't everybody just love everybody? Because I heard somebody preaching on that the last couple of days, a lady who talks a lot about love and angels. 
She kept talking, we need to, yes, of course we need all, we need to love one another. Of course we do. But we're trying to get there. We're evolving. People are evolving day by day by day and learning to love. And they, they, until you learn how to love, you keep abusing. Or you keep being cold. So that's a type of abuse. See you next one.